Hey guys, Ricky Lock here, back once again. I hope everyone's having a great day as always. And um, today, I took this lock out of my naughty buck, my naughty bucket that's been there for, whew, probably definitely over a year. Um, this was uh, sent to me by Paul Springett. Maybe he'll remember when he sent it to me, but it's it's been in there for a while and uh, works beautifully. And I think you can see the problem there. Um, crazy ass bidding and uh, this is his first challenge lock um, when I first got this I picked on it for every day for a couple of weeks and I eventually came to the conclusion that uh, I thought it was unpickable but uh, my skills have progressed a little bit since then and uh, oh my tools have too so I think well, I know I can get it open now. I uh, just picked it open a second ago, so hopefully going to replicate that on camera here. Um, and uh, finally be able to see what's inside of here. Pretty curious. Um, one of the tools that I just made not too long ago is this. Uh, it's a deeper hook, and it has like a rounded tip, where usually I use hooks like like this one almost the same depth but it has a flat tip and uh... well there's a reason why they make them with a rounded tip um... it's a lot easier to get them under the under the pins that way but usually the flat one works for me because i'm usually picking a lock that uh... that i'm picking right from the bottom of the keyway and the flat tip doesn't ma matter as much then but for a lock like this kind of quick set uh, Lockwood keyway that you're picking off this ledge usually um, yeah the rounded tip is almost a necessity so let's I think I'm going to start with my deforest half ball first and we'll see what we can do quit blabbing and try to get her open and of course my cat starts to make noise trying to open cupboard doors come here buddy I'm paying attention to you alright so I just use the DeForest to try and get a few things off the off the floor to so to speak and Use this to look for counter rotation, and there's some on. I don't know. I want to say it's four. Yeah, it is four. Surprisingly, five already feels set. Okay, that's good. Okay, five. I was hard to get under, but I'm not getting counter rotation from him. Oh, there it is. Just have to center on it perfectly, and I'm letting off a lot of tension. I think I got it. Oh, counter rotation up front again from one or two. Oh, there we go. Friggin' right. I'll take it. Um, one thing I'm going to do before I uh, fully gut this, I'm going to see how my pick behaves in it, because I suspect we might have picked a couple pins, um, not by mistake, but uh, with the shaft there. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So yeah, I guess my skills have uh, maybe progressed a little bit and like I said my, my tools too but definitely my knowledge and, and skills so this is gonna go torture someone else for a bit maybe it'll stay in their bucket for a year <laughs> no I don't think so um, follower I'm not gonna use the key So let's put this in here and take a closer look. 
So I went in with the DeForest first from from the ledge here, not from the bottom. You can't really can't really pick this from the bottom. And I think I just So number four would be an overset with this if I'm trying to set number five. Number one, or sorry, number two would not be possible to set without oversetting one. But with my magic new hook that I really like, um, from that ledge, of course, that's really hard to get under stuff, but uh, let's see here. So yeah, number five, Picking number five almost sets three and four. I'm not sure if that that is definitely the case. It's hard to say, depending on binding order and stuff like that. But uh, it sure is possible. Um, trying to get to number two. Oh, sorry about the focus, guys. Trying to get to number two. and try and make sure I'm... Wow, this is hard for some reason. <laughs> Trying to make sure I'm directly under... Okay, there's... Wow, it's hard to get right under two. Okay, definitely under one. <laughs> Harder than it looks, guys. Okay, there. So yeah, even number two I guess, binding order, I was able to set number two without oversetting one. It's close, but I mean, I opened it, so that's uh, that's crazy. Maybe, uh, maybe this wouldn't have been possible in the other direction. I'm not quite sure, but I could already tell they're they're not standard key pins, so that's that's notable. Let's dump these out. I already had seven minutes. Holy crap. And then, like I said, this is Paul's first challenge lock. Guess he wanted to inflict maximum pain and, and frustration. Okay. And... Let's see if I can get this in camera for you guys. I'll get these all out and then we'll look at them. But I'm already seeing what I kind of suspected from the feel. Oops, drop that one. I don't think I'm going to bother taking the springs out, but I'll take a quick look and uh, you won't be able to see that. Um, mm, they don't all look the same, but I, I don't think I'm going to take them out. But uh, yeah, take a look at these pins, guys. And take a look at the core real quick, too. core is uh, smooth. Yep. And the pins are not smooth. <laughs> nice uh, serrations on number one. Oh, I'm pointing at the camera screen. Nice serrations on number one. Four of them, I believe. One, two, three, four. Um, standard number two with a taper. Um, nice spool here, so you overset that and you'll be stuck on it. Same with uh, this guy here, serrations. Nice deep one there. And a standard. And up top we have the famous Lockwood uh, shallow lipped spools which are um, a fun of their own. <laughs> so great work Paul. I'm glad you uh, you reminded me about this lock and uh, I was able to get it picked. And uh, we'll be able to send it on to the next uh, victim. I mean picker.
<laughs> All right. Uh, thanks again, Paul, and uh, everyone else. Appreciate you guys uh, joining me. Appreciate everyone's support. And, uh, yeah, don't be shy to leave a comment, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Thanks again.